Hey guys, Vinyl Community. Um, just a short look at some of the albums I've played lately. And uh, some of it you might even like. Let's start with an album I have just bought new not that long ago, which is Shoot Off Assembly by Brian Eno. It's a double album. Uh, I've known this album for a while. And uh, it's actually one of my favorite uh, ambient albums by Eno. Even though it it's not that much known compared with some of his other work. Uh, so Shoot of Assembly is basically a collection of tracks that he had used as music for some artistic installations. Um, It, it is a very well done uh, record, coming with a lot of liner notes and photos, and uh, it's all in a very good quality. So, uh, and it wasn't expensive, I think I bought like, I don't know, like 22 euro for that. That's what I paid, and uh, uh, also, and that's kind of an important part, I mean, let's be, let's keep it real for a second, should we? Here's the thing, I really like vinyl, I like records, I enjoy making these videos and um, every time, every time I'm sitting here and holding a, an ambient album into the camera, I kind of feel like a snob. Because, let's be honest, while it's fun to have all kind of music on vinyl, the, the one and only genre that's kind of not, not invented for the vinyl culture, it's ambient. I mean, if, there's, if there ever was a category of music that, is, that was made for CDs, that was made for, for digital formats, it's of course ambient music. Uh, it's the kind of uh, acoustic clarity you are looking for. I mean, it's, it's impossible. When I, when I buy some older record from late 70s, some, some John Hassel or Brian Eno records, I mean, I spent so much time cleaning it up and cleaning it up and cleaning up just, just getting the all the crackling noise at least a little bit i mean in the end it remains snobbery because in the end you put it away and you buy it a second time on cd just so have so you have a certain peace of mind now mr brian eno seems to know that that's why he made sure that this gets added to his record, which is a wonderful link where you can claim and download the whole album in a digital manner. And uh, I'm a big fan of that. So um, I love to show this album here. But the truth of the matter is, if I'm gonna listen to this the ne next time, I will probably use the digital files. But still, um, the production is wonderful and it's actually great to have it in this uh, to, in this big version with these pictures and with these texts so um, I would not want to miss that but I'm aware that there is a touch of snobism behind it as well but hey those other first world problems we have to deal with <laughs> so I don't know if you see it the same way uh, I can usually I can't resist to buy certain ambient albums on vinyl, but I'm aware of the fact that this does not happen as a you know service to the acoustic experience that a vinyl record with ambient music on it can deliver to you. So that's the reality of things. Now what else? Yeah, I've listened to this album now something completely different. Eight. Quadruple Five by Spliff. Now this was a German band that, I mean, they basically started as the as the Nina Hagen band, but since Nina Hagen is a bit crazy, they kind of had all fo a falling out with her, and because they were all so much pissed together, <laughs> they founded their own band and called it Spliff. I think they called it Spliff because they have all the same proclivity to the same kind of drug. Um, so this is a. This is quite an interesting album of German pop music in the early 80s. Um, I listen to it like once in a year maybe. Um, it, has a, it, has a, it has its own unique sound and uh, 
Um, there's actually quite some cool keyboard playing on it. Um, I think that Reinhold Heil was quite a, or is quite a, an interesting keyboarder. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a cool sound. It's a cool sound. Um, not the music I listen to regularly, but uh, from time to time, interesting. Since we are already so bloody eclectic, let's go in this direction. Art Garfunkel's Angel Claire. So uh, this is of course the famous Art Garfunkel famed for his uh, beautiful song arrangements, which he does here a lot. Um, yeah, it's a good album. I, I think on the B side it feels a bit overproduced. I mean, it's like, ooh, tone it down, man. Just keep it simple. But um, yeah, it comes with a it comes with a giant poster. I will show you only. I mean, this is just a. This is just uh, this is just a part of the whole poster. I will not even try to unfold it here. Um, yeah. So that's Art Garfunkel. It's so cool. Also, this is an inner sleeve that is called the inner sleeve uh, with uh, some uh, products. From the label. So this is all the stuff. Is I think when did he do this album? I would think like 1970 or something. No, 1973 on CBS. Um, I mean, there's some amazing people playing on it. Uh, you have like Joe Osborne on bass guitar, Hall Blaine on drums, uh, uh, Michael or Martian. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, every day some something new to find out. About the world of music. So yeah, I kind of, I kind of like the A side a little better than the B side, but um, it's a nice album. Good singer. So let's get a bit proggy. Heavy horses, Jethro Tull. Uh, one of the three uh, sort of a pastoral Jethro Tull albums from the second half of the seventies. It's a, a wonderful record like I mean, basically everything they did in the 70s isn't it uh, now this is kind of the height of the time uh, when uh, John Glasscock was uh, still alive and still in the band it comes here with a nice inlay with lyrics so this is a of course a chrysalis record um, and with a lot of uh, Famous tracks that uh, have been played live quite a lot. Probably mostly Acres Wild or No Lullaby Moth is really good. Uh, of course, Heavy Horses, um, the eponym of this album. So, this is all very pastoral, all very uh, sort of uh, living in the countryside themed. Uh, yeah, and it's still in the sort of a sextet. Set up with John Evans and uh, Barry Moore Barlow and uh, David Palmer and uh, of course Martin Barr. So that's Heavy Horses. I'm kind of trying to present this in a speedy manner because probably this has been shown a thousand times on VC. I don't know. Although I don't see that many. Tal records uh, in VC videos, but maybe this is also kind of felt as a very obvious choice for a record collector. I don't know, maybe this just to uh, whatever. Now, uh, certainly a valid segue would be to Rain Dances by Camel. Same time, could this be actually the same year? As Heavy Horses? It's imaginable, isn't it? You know, Heavy Horses came a year later than this. Not that it matters. <laughs> so, um, this is one, another wonderful album by Camel. I quite like this one. Uh, it's usually very, very melodic, very focused with wonderful guitar solos. So, um, also interesting, uh, the label here. So this is an American edition that came out on North American Records, um, but that's not something you see a lot here in Europe. So it's probably the only record I have with this label here. 
but if you are from America you probably have a lot of those so that's camel and and finally to stay in the pro rock genre uh, master strokes by Bill Bruford this is a compilation reflecting uh, Bill Bruford's previous uh, solo albums plus a, a two albums he did with uh, Patrick Moraz so um, let's get this came out on Virgin's EG and uh, yeah this is not simple listening uh, um, you have to invest uh, your mind to an album like that a lot of complex stuff on it uh, there's a lot of Alan Holdsworth on it uh, Jeff Berlin playing bass so this is quite a cool album um, yeah and uh, a lot of drumming obviously as usual uh, CD for the end this one is quite interesting. Um, this came out on Sub Rosa, I think uh, again somewhere in the beginning of the 90s. Uh, it's called Futurism and Dada Reviewed and it's basically a compilation with uh, sort of a, the classic uh, Dada and Futurism material from ranging from the very early 1900s un up until late 1920s. So you have the big names here, of course, uh, Jean Cocteau, Kurt Schwitters, uh, Guillaume Apollinaire, uh, you have, of course, Marinetti here, and Luigi Russolo, and so on. So uh, if you look for something that you would probably not listen to every day, yet um, which kind of give you the basic of Dadaism for the archive, so to speak, this is a very good purchase for that. Uh, it comes with a booklet um, with sort of a lot of biographies and explanations and uh, uh, all in English so um, you can cover your interest in Dadaism with this one CD quite well so that's it for now and um, see you next time and let's keep it spinning goodbye